Sometimes it can be a wee bit challenging to tell what is even happening on your screen when playing Overwatch. When the game is firing on all cylinders and the special effects vomit is taking over your gameplay, the biggest problem is not getting on the objective, but fighting your body's natural instinct of wanting to look away in order to not develop a serious case of epilepsy. But even if we ignore edge cases in which everyone in the lobby collectively decided to hit the Q button, it isn't always easy to try and explain away what is happening and especially why it is happening. Most of the time, the best of action is to not question it in the first place and just chalk it up under the list of things that you're going to have to discuss with your therapist. I mean, in fairness, I guess we all happen in that situation before, right? Sometimes we do weird things throughout the match that don't make sense to anyone else because of an individual rivalry that started a few games or maybe even a few days ago. Other times again, it isn't the player that you are targeting with your BM, but rather the hero that they decided to play. I mean, Jeff knows if I could give every Doomfist player I come up against a tiny Overwatch experience, I most assuredly would. Considering my general willingness to, quote, throw for content, you might be surprised to hear that even I sometimes end up in games where I can't find any rhyme and reason behind any of the things that are currently going on. But before we talk about that in more detail, on our last episode. Having been blessed with what is quite possibly the most wholesome Zenyatta player to ever exist, I made it my duty to protect this man with my very life. Every step I took, every ability I used, and every elimination I obtained, I did so to protect Zenpai and repay him for his kindness that inspired me to become a more supportive player. If there's one thing I learned after playing alongside Zenpai, it's the fact that there are many support players out there that still suffer. Support players that need mine and your help, and as such, I devoted myself to protecting them as much as I protected my fellow Zen mains. I mean, have you ever been in a situation where you nano boost your diva, assuming she would peel for you in return, just to watch her run past the Winston that is currently devouring your health pool? There are few things as frustrating as that, and as such, you can bet your V-Bucks that when my Ana gives me the boost, I am going to dedicate every every cooldown in the known universe to protect her from every and anyone trying to harm her. As much as I believe in karmic retribution, I also believe in doing good so that good things happen to you. And if I can annoy some DPS players in the process, then I guess that's what we can call a win-win. Oh no no no, that maker is about to be really angry! Oh, there it is. And don't you smug looking tank and DPS players sit there assuming that leaving your supports to their own devices is acceptable. It doesn't take a lot of effort to turn around and slap a flanker across the face, earning your supports gratitude and subsequently also the healing. But that said, things aren't always that cut and dry. Every so often we find ourselves in matches where everything we learned about the game doesn't seem to apply. Matches that are so inherently weird that, at the end of it, whether you win or lose, you find yourself asking if whatever happened actually happened, or if all of it was just a KFC overload induced fever dream. F's in chat for a KFC in my neighborhood that had to close. Anyway, it is one such match that I want to present to you. Our story today, once again, takes place on Hollywood. Now, I'm no stranger to weird matches, usually being the reason that they turn out to be weird in the first place, but what really threw me off about this one was that the enemy team was playing a bog-standard round of Overwatch while facing off against a bunch of weirdos that, by all accounts, should be spawn-camped. And considering the hog and ball torture that our tanks were exposing us to, that may be more of a likely possibility than I am willing to admit. But I always say don't knock it till you try it, so our team stoned out of the gate ready to face the enemy. Ghost and their pocket healer immediately set the pace for this match, but our hammer decided that going straight towards the objective was the most optimal way of creating space for our team to move in. And where some of you may assume that their goal was to cap the point as to force the enemies to contest them, instead, Lincoln opted for the high IQ play of donating ultimate charge to the enemy Genji whilst pretending to be part of the wall decor. With one of our tanks trying to pass off as an inanimate object and the second one pretending to be a DPS, we ended up just awkwardly standing in the choke point whilst hoping for some kind of miracle. But that miracle didn't happen. By the time we tried to back out of the lost engagement, our team had already suffered heavy damage to their morale and the final nail in the coffin would be me witnessing my mercy being served extra crispy. All I could do was watch my team feeding their brains out, desperately trying to keep them alive, but ultimately falling under the pressure coming from the opposition. Eventually, I couldn't help but lose hope for this match going anywhere, really wondering what I did for Jeff to curse me with a game like this. But my spirits rose up again when I saw that my Roadhog decided to switch off to something that could actually provide some amount of protection to the rest of the team. As he made his way out of spawn, radiating confidence and team play energy, I was ready to follow this man to the pits of heck itself.
Okay, now granted, I didn't imagine that to be his opening play. Well, I guess if rallying us into action was his intent, then by Jeff, he definitely managed to achieve that. Clearly, ordinary plays would not net us victory in this match, so maybe it's time to get creative. I decided that the best target for my nano boost would be our Mercy, who just popped her wings, and as much as I assumed that she would go on the offensive with it, instead, the damage mitigation gave her the confidence to revive our Reinhardt. And if we ignore that our Genji got solo graphed, our Hammond gave the enemy tank an entire hamster's worth of ultimate charge, and the fact that we lost the fight, we could make a case for our nano boosted Mercy Res being the sole reason that we ultimately succeeded in capping the point. I'm sure it had nothing to do with the fact that our Reinhardt eventually eliminated half the enemy team practically on its own. While I assumed that capping the first point could potentially breathe new life into our team and create the willingness to play the game in more conventional fashion, I came back from my respawn just to witness by Hammond proving once again that this would be no ordinary round of Overwatch. Wasted ultimates aside, we actually now had a shot at winning. If we just play our cards right, we might be able to use our momentum and move this card all the way to the end. But naturally, the enemy team would not make it easy for us. As the gates to the second part of the map opened, I knew that we had a gargantuan task at our hands. The enemy Ash occupying the high ground made entry rather difficult, but thankfully, our Hansa put an end to the onslaught of dynamite via means of a log-sized arrow. If there was ever a time for us to press the advantage, it would most assuredly be now prompting me to boost my Reinhardt, whom I knew loved to pretend to be a DPS. While he was displaying a yet unprecedented amount of restraint by occasionally holding up his barrier as opposed to swinging continuously, I had been sweating bullets in the backline, pocketing this man like no other Reinhardt had ever been pocketed before. Even though he dropped dangerously low on HP on a few occasions, ultimately, we found ourselves victorious. While all of this was going down on the objective, my Hammond, who has already proven to be the special variety of player, decided that trying to make friends with the enemy Mercy would be more beneficial to our chances for success. Their Mercy, on the other hand, was feeling visibly uncomfortable in that situation, trying to play dead in hopes of the giant mech simply rolling out and leaving her alone. But Lincoln insisted that the pretty dragon lady responded to his attempts of communicating, and eventually she did answer accordingly, before slowly having been granted passage to reconnect with her team, or whatever was left of them. Needless to say that I had no idea any of this was happening at the time of playing, questioning where the heck that Mercy just came from. Regardless of that, both teams had replenished their troops and we were ready to butt heads once again on the card to see if our previous victory was merely a fluke, or if we were actually an enemy that could be taken seriously. Both of our Reinhards had been beefing it out on the card, but it will be my team that comes out ahead in this battle of mental fortitude, allowing us to push on further and drive this baby home. Or at least so I thought. Remember when I told you that the enemy team was playing a box standard round of Overwatch? Well, we would fall victim to a simple law of nature by which dropping a nanoblade into a graviton surge most definitely results in certain doom. And guess who was the only one surviving it? That's right, our resident Hammond player ready for another express delivery of free ultimate charge. It slowly dawned on us that maybe, just maybe, this round won't be half as weird as it is if our Hammond simply decided to play a hero that didn't make for a mobile food bank. I mean, if his goal was to solve world hunger by feeding on cooldown, then I guess he's doing a pretty good job. But as far as our game is concerned, we're definitely starving for an off tank. I know this is just quick play and we're all trying to have fun, but refusing to attack the enemy team while feeding a tank's worth of HP to them really is taking the piss. While his gameplay contributed to us being on the wrong side of a spawn camp, I couldn't really be mad for long because it created a rather comical situation between me and the enemy Zarya. And where you might assume that Lincoln had enough pattern recognition to understand that the opposition did not want to be his friend, he still tried to go for a pacifist playthrough. I mean, at least getting charged off the high ground should be enough of a message to finally stop playing the video game, but even still, Lincoln decided to endure the abuse, victory be damned. Our team was starting to lose hope as the clock read 20 seconds left to capture the objective, but if we're going to lose anyway, we might as well lose fighting. Sean and Hanzo opened up strong, taking out the distracted enemy Ash, which of course Lincoln was not too happy about. While our team was fighting, Fighting tooth and nail to try and come out victorious after all, our Hammond continued to do everything in his power to not actually contribute to that victory. Also, let me just highlight that I've never seen a nano boosted Mercy be so effective when it comes to creating space. Our Reinhardt refused to allow the enemies to regroup, chasing down their surviving Zarya to climax in a massive shatter. Every play this man executed filled our team with confidence, inspiring us to play for a comeback, while of course Hammond continued to provide nothing of value. But even Lincoln understood that the enemy Reinhardt was no friend of his, so after having been saved by my sleep dart, he decided to get back at him with yet another solo ult. But if you think that this play 
time in the change of heart sites of our feeding degenerate, then you'd be solely mistaken. Because of course he took the next possible opportunity to allow the enemies to refill their ultimate charge. It is worth mentioning that, at the time, I don't think anyone on my team had any idea what the heck he was doing, and we just kinda accepted that Hammond is a backline kind of character. And when the next nanoblade rained down on us to reset our position once again, we all knew that we couldn't rely on him when it comes to trying to win this match. But maybe I didn't give him enough credit. Because of course we have been very focused on his failed attempts of trying to make friends with the opposition, but perhaps his obvious distrust for the enemy Reinhardt could prove useful. What if, and only if, a sleepy shaman who had shown to be hostile was vengeful enough to chase our feeder extraordinaire through the entire map in order to get revenge for the solo alts? I mean, to you and I this might seem rather silly, but it looked like we weren't the only team dealing with the thrower. As a matter of fact, while I was busy fighting a very angry moth in the backline, sleepy shaman fell for Lincoln's bait and just like a trained dog, followed his every move around the map. At some point, you would assume that he understands all that being obvious bait to remove their main tank from the front line, but hatred is louder than reason. The chase found its end in Sleepy Shaman wasting his ultimate, and by the time he did so, our team successfully pushed the card all the way to the end, entering last fight territory. Our Reinhardt was determined to put our team on his back, enjoying my undivided attention when it comes to receiving heals and nano boosts. The enemy team made a last ditch effort by utilizing the ultimates provided by Lincoln, but without a main tank holding the line, their survivability fell to rock bottom. One by one, we successfully cleaned up every remaining defender until what seemed impossible at first finally happened. I don't know if I should say despite of or thanks to our Hammond's attempts of throwing the game, but regardless of that, we eventually managed to come out victorious. It is funny I said this on the last episode that took place on Hollywood because here I am saying it again. No matter how dire the situation, every game is always winnable. The end. Honestly, originally I was not sure if this game was gonna make it into a video, but after taking a closer look at the replay, I could not highlight just how how weird this was. It was all good fun at the end, and hopefully you also had fun watching this. If you did, do let me know by dropping me a like on your way out, consider subscribing if you want to see more, and don't forget to hit that bell icon to not miss out on the next episode. I hope you guys are staying safe, and until next time, peace.